You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Little Miracles with your host, Penelope. Through her own personal healing, Penelope can transform all aspects of your life through numerous modalities and techniques, including Reiki, energy healing, cranial sacral therapy, and more. So now, please welcome the host of Little Miracles, Penelope. Welcome. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today, we're going to talk about forgiveness once again, because, well, forgiveness has been a rough topic for me anyway. So believe it or not, you all out there, you are helping me to process and learn about how to forgive. So about Little Miracles a little bit. Little Miracles has been important to me because it gives me a chance to share with you techniques and methods of personal growth and healing that you may not know about. And I say, as I said, today we'll talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgiving those who have wronged us. Who can ask this of us? Only God and the angels can do that. It's too personal. It's too painful. No one can understand how deeply we've been hurt or betrayed. No one can force forgiveness. No one can make the hurt go away. But you know what? That's true. No one can make the hurt go away. It's up to us. We have to do it ourselves. Sorry to say, no one can do it for us. It just doesn't, just doesn't work that way that someone else could forgive for us. When we are done processing, when we're done processing whatever hurt we have sustained, then we can forgive. And what has to happen? We have to relinquish the hurtful event. We have to surrender our anger. We have to let it go. We have to abandon the grudge altogether, abandon the hate. If we don't, we are harming ourselves. We are not allowing ourselves to return to balance or to homeostasis, if you want to put it clinically, to peace and to joy. The big reason to forgive is to release the other person's hold on you or on us. If we do not forgive, if we do not forgive that other person, we have, they have power over us forever. The person or event is always in the back of our mind. That person becomes a permanent tenant in our mind, which causes a lack of focus and reduces productivity and puts a stranglehold on our joy. Do you want someone else? Do you want someone else to have control over your time, over your mind, over your emotions, over your life in effect? So, there are seven rules for forgiveness that uh, were in an article, uh, an article in Psychology Today. And these seven rules are 
Let's see, sorry, finding them. One, forgiveness does not mean that you have to forget to. We don't forgive and forget at all. People who have been terribly abused, neglected, or victimized don't forget don't forget their traumas, and they really don't need to do that. They can learn to forgive, and yet, even so, remember everything quite well so that we will not face the same situation again. Number two, forgiveness does not mean you are minimizing your victimization experience. By engaging in forgiveness, you are, you are not saying it's okay. It wasn't, or, and it wasn't that bad. Not at all. You can forgive and still admit that the victimization and the trauma was very real and very, very bad. Number three, forgiveness does not mean that you're a chump. Forgiveness is not a sign of weakness or naivete or foolishness or immaturity. No, actually just the opposite. Forgiveness is a sign of maturity and wholeness. Really much more it's a sign of wholeness. Number four, forgiveness doesn't depend upon the other person apologizing or or accepting your offer of forgiveness. Sadly, you cannot expect that the other person who wronged you can fully understand or appreciate that what he or she did was wrong. Sorry about that. They may never admit that they did anything problematic at all. That's okay because you can engage in forgiveness. You can forgive for your own sake, for your own benefit, not for theirs. You don't need anything from them in order to forgive them. Number five, forgiveness is a process. Forgiveness is not an all It's not an all or none, black or white kind of thing. It's a process. You may never be able to completely forgive another person, but you can work to get closer to doing so. You may never get to a 10 out of 10 on the forgiveness scale, but perhaps you can, you can get up to a six or a seven or an eight maybe. Number six, forgiveness is for your health and your well-being, not theirs. Since research shows that holding on to anger is toxic to you and your health and well-being, sorry, your health and well-being, and since no one wants to be able, since no one wants to be around those who are chronically angry, bitter, resentful, and unforgiving, then forgiveness is something that you do for you. It is in your best interest to forgive others for their transgressions. You are not engaging in forgiveness to do them a favor, but to do one for yourself. And finally, number seven, the secret sauce in forgiveness is letting go of anger. I have worked with many people who have been terribly victimized and traumatized by physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. And you know what? Those who do well and cope the best in life are those who have found some way to forgive themselves and forgive others. They've worked hard to let go of their anger and resentment and moved on. They don't forget, but they don't allow themselves to continue to be victimized. 
Well, it's time for us to go to break. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back to talk with our guests. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together, we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. And we're back. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're going to have we're going to have a chat now with uh, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. Uh, Raymond has written a book, and I will let him uh, explain it to you further. But it's a book about his um, his journey, and and it has a uh, sort of a, a nice bit about forgiveness in it. Uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Reverend Dr. Raymond, are you there? Yes, ma'am, I am. Thank you. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about your book? Uh, so the book is called Moving Mountains, A Journey of Transformation. And it's basically a response that many people have asked me to tell my story or my process of how I went from being someone who literally suffered as an addiction, um, having grown up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, suffered a variety of types of abuse, and literally hated myself and used to pray every night that whatever deity was listening would assist me in dying in my sleep. And I hated everything and everyone. And even though I put a nice smile on my face, that's not what I felt to the core of my being. So through the process of discovering my own spiritual path and my own sense of authenticity, I found what I'm going to call the secret to life that I have the power to change my life experience. By changing my paradigms and my consciousness, literally my life experience starts to change. So a lot of people ask me how I literally found the path or the meaning to life and to be happy in the midst of sorrow, etc. And so the book was the response to that. The book is the answer to that. That is wonderful. And, And I send you prayer and the light, brother. Wow. That's that's huge. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So so um, so let me ask you. Uh, so okay. so was there there was some forgiveness for yourself that needed to happen? Is that correct? Quite a bit. Yes. Years yeah. of it, actually. Years yes. Of, wow. Well, wow. well, can you tell us a little bit about that? So one of the things that I discovered about at least my journey of forgiveness was that I had been duped into believing that forgiveness was one thing when, in fact, forgiveness was something altogether different. And when I oh. learned what... Go ahead. I'm, uh, well, can you explain that? Say a little bit more about that. 
So culturally, we're taught that forgiveness is this pie in the sky, everything's going to be rainbows and daisies and gumdrops and bunny rabbits. And forgiveness is actually a spiritual process. Like it's a yes. spiritual technique. It's not just um, take a pill and everything's great. It's literally peeling the onion layer by layer. Give yourself permission to cry as you're peeling the onion, realizing that the onion is eventually going to become something that goes into a salad, goes into a meal that actually nourishes your body temple. So it's actually a process that you go through that makes you a better person. And many things in our culture and society don't teach that. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And oh, so, oh, <laughs> um, what, what, so what steps did you go through? I'm, I'm very interested now. <laughs> okay. So one of the things was understanding that forgiveness is, it's more like being bitten by a snake and getting the venom out of your body. Because suppose you go camping and you get bitten by a snake. What does right? it serve to be angry at the snake, to be angry at God for putting the snake out in the wilderness, to be angry at yourself for saying, I should have known better than to go camping with these snakes out here, and you're angry and you're mad and you're angry and you're mad. Meanwhile, the venom is circulating through your system. So right. something happens, and the first thing you do is acknowledge that this hurt, whatever that means, whether it's I perceived an injustice or literally someone struck me and physically harmed me. That doesn't right. matter because our heart, our mind, our consciousness doesn't differentiate the degree of or the type of hurt. So someone calling you a name can hurt emotionally, psychologically, just as much as a gunshot wound. Right? Yes, so indeed. Indeed. Understanding okay. that number one is get the venom out of your system. And you, it's a process to do that. And do you have any tips for us to get the venom out of our system? So one, acknowledge that you were bitten and acknowledge okay. what that means. Okay. So whatever it is, um, being able to identify it as clearly and as, possibly, and as uh, tangibly as possible is vital. So someone says something and you don't like it. Okay, sitting back and saying, what is it about this comment? What is it about this insult? What is it about this thing that offended me? Because whatever that is, it's somewhere in me that received it. So, for example, if someone says, Ray, you are the dumbest, ugliest, most useless individual I have ever met in my life. In order for that to hurt me, somewhere I have to believe that those words are valid for me. Right. Right, right. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they're simply words to the degree that if someone walked up to me and said, Ray, did you know that you're a pink flamingo? And I'm going to look at them like, <laughs> really? That's what you see? Oh, <laughs> let me give you the number to an optometrist. Right? So <laughs> okay. even if someone calls me stupid, ugly, useless, whatever, it's the same thing. If I know that I'm not, those words fall on, as we say, they fall on deaf ears. But if there's somewhere in me that they resonate, then that's where I'm being called to shine light. That's where I'm being called to heal because their words are serving as a reminder that there's something right. in me calling for love. Right. There's there's a place in you that was open to that negativity. There was there was right. there was open to those hooks and the right. knives. Excellent. Wow. Right. That's I mean, beautiful. Like Rumi says that. Uh, Rumi says that the wound is the place where the light enters you. And as I say, it's not just where it enters you, but it's also where it shines out of you. Because as we nice. heal, that light also shines out to help and guide and heal others. Wow. Well, wow. okay. Well, that, that really touches me. Thank you so much. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about forgiveness, if you wouldn't mind. Um, okay. So let's see. What is... What is forgiveness and what isn't forgiveness? Okay, so I, I use a like lot of analogies. <laughs> okay, oh, wonderful. So for me, forgiveness is it's a lens, right? And it's a lens that allows us to see 
that in the truth, in truth, right here, right now, we're unharmed by the shadows of the past and of the perceptions that, you know, we may have carried. So it's like a key that opens the cell door that allows us to let go and allows us to cut the cords that keep us connected to or bound to another person, an event, or situation that's been keeping us prisoner. So forgiveness is simply a method of letting go and being free. Ah, that's wonderful. Freeing ourselves, wonderful. And what isn't forgiveness? So now this is, this is, a, this is a good one because this is one of those things that keeps us connected to it, actually, is because people think that forgiveness is forgetting or forgiveness is condoning. Like, I'm giving you permission that, you know, if I forgive you, then clearly what I'm saying is you're, you raping me was okay or you physically abusing me or verbally abuse was okay. And it's not condoning. It's not forgetting. It is not an opportunity to stand on our soapbox with some kind of self righteous piety where we, you know, dictate and determine things for other people. It's also not a type of martyrdom, which technically is another form of victimhood, where Uh someone says, well, now that I've forgiven you, come on back into my life so you can, you know, you can mess me up again and wreak havoc all over again and you can hurt me again. Oh, okay. Hey, Raymond. Yes. Uh, We will come right back after our commercial. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back to finish hearing what Raymond says about what isn't forgiveness. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. We're back. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're talking with Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson about forgiveness and his journey. Uh, Dr. Anderson, uh, yes. we were what were we, we were talking about? What isn't forgiveness? Can you summarize that again and 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 complete how you were telling us about it? Yes. So to repeat and add on one other thing. So forgiveness is not forgetting. It is not condoning. It is not some form of self-righteous piety. It is not any form of martyrdom, nor is it a quick fix. That's what forgiveness is not. Excellent. Very important. Very important. Yes. So, yes. so, so moving forward with forgiveness, why do you think it is important for us to forgive? So forgiveness for a variety of reasons, not just because of the emotional freedom, but 
lack of forgiveness affects us physically, mentally, or intellectually, spiritually, emotionally. Like it affects our entire system. So it's important to forgive because it frees us to be able to live an empowered and an authentic life that we are actually in alignment with our highest and best good. One bravo, bravo. That you said that so succinctly. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Um, so, well, do you think we could really forget if we forgive? So, that's a very, I love this question because it's almost a moot point. And I say that because there's no need to forget. So let's go back to the analogy I gave about that snake bite. Okay. Do I really want to, do I really want to forget and let go of the memory of being bitten when I'm going to go out and go camping again? Like, what's better? Let go of the fear of <laughs> what if, you know, let go of the anger, let go of all of that stuff, and still having the freedom to stay, but I can still go camping. So there's nothing, there's no need for me to forget it. Forgetting it, it's almost like, you know, when a friend says, you know, I bought you this gift, and oh, I so appreciate this, and oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, and the friend says, don't worry about it. Forget about it. It's their way of saying, you do not need to continue to bring this up. You can let it go. I receive your gratitude. Now let it go so we can move forward. That's what the forgetting means. Forgetting doesn't mean someone beat you, raped you, hurt you, harmed you, whatever, and you have to forgive them and then say, the slate is completely clean. I have forgotten it. That's unrealistic. It is not healthy. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next question. Can we forgive too soon? So, okay. That's, I love that question too. So it's really funny. So if it's real forgiveness, I do not believe then it, it can be too soon. However, if it is pseudo forgiveness, then yes. So let's remember real quickly. Remember the Charleston, uh, church shooting. There was a, um, a series of family members, one who I remember particularly, her name was Nadine. I don't remember her last name, but I remember Nadine. And during the trial, she said to the shooter, I forgive you. That's right. I love that. A lot of people criticized saying, how is that possible? And they questioned, did she mean it? Was that just some, you know, Christian, whatever? And she was just saying it, but didn't really mean it. And I think that Everybody at the level that they are able to can forgive when they are ready to, to whatever degree that they're ready to. It doesn't mean that if I forgive today, if you offend me today and later this evening I say I forgive you, I may have only been able to forgive you at the first layer of the onion. And then next week something reminds me that, oh, wow, I still have this to forgive her for. And then that's the next layer and then the next layer. So it's still a process. But. Right. You can forgive immediately if that's the degree or level of your readiness to let go. It's possible. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And that was a wonderful example. All right. Next question. Many have a challenging time forgiving. Why do you believe this is so? And, well, why is it so hard to forgive? I think one of the main reasons it is so difficult is because... As Don Miguel Ruiz says, we've been domesticated. There are so many things in our culture, from our educational system to religious teachings to things that our parents have taught us to political speeches and debates. We see anger and insult and lack of uh, friendliness and compassion. We see all of this stuff. So when we are being called to forgive, it goes against the grain of so much of what we've been taught. Little boys don't cry. Well, right. part of forgiving, part of going through the healing process may mean that you need to cry. But if you've been taught that you don't, then how do I cross the bridge of being able to? There are so many things that we're taught that I think that is what builds the obstacle to making it more challenging. So that when we are able to step back and say, I give myself full permission to feel it, then it starts gotcha. to become easier. All right. Well, we're going to go to commercial. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, 
bringing you little miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back to talk about forgiveness. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. And we're back. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the Tune, I'm sorry, on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're talking with Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson about forgiveness. Uh, Raymond, so I have another question for you. What emotional and physical consequences might we pay if we don't forgive? So... Because forgiveness, there's this thing, this great thing called mind-body connection. That whatever is going through in our consciousness, in our spirit, our soul, can outpicture and does outpicture in our physical environment, our physical body temple, and our experiences. So holding on to anger and holding on to fear, et cetera, it's almost like it reminds me of uh, the Sorry, Buddha said, and you can put anger anywhere in there. Were you saying something? Oh, no, no. I'm so sorry. sorry. No worries. Um, When the Buddha said holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else, but you are the one that gets burned. So when we hold on to this anger, the grudge, the resentment, et cetera, it increases our stress levels. We have anything from headaches to neck and back aches, stomach ulcers, blood pressure issues, increased weight gain, and for some, loss of appetite. Um, Some people have even expressed, you know, the experience of developing cancer as a result of holding on to harboring this thing that is literally eating them up from the inside emotionally. Mm, The the Mayo Clinic uh, posted something saying that when we are able to forgive someone, you know, we're letting go of the grudge and the bitterness. We have healthier relationships. We have greater spiritual and psychological well-being, less anxiety, less stress, less hostility, lower blood pressure. So, I mean, there are amazing benefits to saying that holding this cold, letting the venom run through my system does not benefit me. Forgiveness is about letting myself heal. It has nothing to do necessarily with the other person. Although it can, my forgiving can liberate someone else, but I have to liberate myself first. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, is there, what would you like to let our listeners know as, as we close the interview with you right now? So just to remember that forgiveness isn't necessarily about or for the other person. 
Um, the Buddha also said that you will not be punished for your anger, but you will be punished by your anger. You can replace anger with anything. You will not be punished by your resentment, by your grudges, by your hostility, but you will be punished by it. So the very thing that you are holding on to is hurting you. So finding someone, a healer, a Reiki mess, finding someone to help you go through it and process it is for right. your benefit, for your well-being. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so much, um, you. Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. Uh, we'll chat with you at the very end. Again, thank you so much. My pleasure. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Pamela Whitman, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you tonight, <laughs> uh, Reverend Pamela? Great. So happy to be joining with you. Wonderful conversation. Yeah. W- wow. Isn't he? Wasn't he wonderful? All right. Beautiful. Well, um, and now I'm going to talk to another wonderful person. Uh, really, it's a great night for me. So um, I'm here to talk with you about uh, The Course in Miracles and forgiveness. And forgiveness uh, has a central role in The Course in Miracles. Uh, and in fact, uh, recently I saw, because uh, I'm studying The Course in Miracles too, recently I saw that uh, forgiveness uh, forgiveness is the route to salvation. Can you tell yep. me a little bit about that? And I mean, that's really big. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I like to say that the Course in Miracles really could be called uh, a course in forgiveness, but Jesus is good at marketing. Um, and <laughs> as... as, <laughs> as as uh, Reverend Dr. Raymond was saying, uh, we have um, learned in the past some untruths about forgiveness, and I'm so grateful for the truth about forgiveness. And uh, this course teaches me that forgiveness offers everything I want. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. And, you know, this course tells me that the ego has many plans for salvation and none of them will work, that the only plan for salvation is God's plan for for salvation, and that is to forgive ourselves, and that we forgive ourselves by welcoming the truth exactly as it is. And the truth is that we are all as God created us. So So in reality, there's actually nothing to forgive. But we get there by allowing our minds to be purified of all the untrue thoughts. So when they come up, we recognize that it has nothing to do with anybody else. That anyone else who comes into our lives, who gives us the opportunity to forgive, is just giving us the opportunity to see those untrue thoughts about ourselves that we've projected out into the world, out into the situation or to the relationship, so then, right. that's the that's the forgiveness opportunity. That's the opportunity okay, me, to recognize. Go ahead, I'll stop. Um, uh, yeah, no, let me back you up a minute. So you started with uh, that uh, the ego was involved. Now, uh, how does the, <laughs> yeah how how does how how does the ego get involved, and how does it get in the way? Okay, so in our minds, uh, there is our Christ mind. That's what was created by God. It's who we really are. And then there's the resistance to that. The resistance to that is the ego. Okay. I mean, why should there be a resistance to that? Well, that that's a great question. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You have answered. You have have the answer. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. It's so, true, um, isn't it? It is. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> all right. So the ego, the ego is its own. The ego is. How do you say this? The um, the sort of the anti answer. Um, because yeah, what happened I guess, is uh, the course tells us that the God created us by thinking us having a loving thought of us as one self and that we had this just silly idea of being separate and trying to, with a separate self, grab all the love. And 
uh, it was a joke and we forgot to laugh. And so God okay. loves us so much. God gave us the Holy Spirit, which was the atonement, was salvation. And uh, that was the answer. And then the ego uh, is trying to be the answer to the answer. Oh, I'll have a better answer than the Holy Spirit. And, awesome. Uh, hey, just so hang on, hang on a minute, um, uh, Reverend Pamela. We're going to go to break. This is Penelope Neeson. Your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back to talk with Reverend Pamela Whitman about forgiveness. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Hello, this is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're talking about forgiveness with Reverend Pamela Whitman. Pamela, so I have a quick question for you. Well, maybe not that quick, but a question. <laughs> is it is it vital that we forgive other people? Only if we want to be happy. <laughs> well, okay then. <laughs> All right. And what happens if we don't forgive? Is is this like a lesson that the universe teaches us? Well, we'll just keep getting the same lesson over and over again. We, you know, we will not, um, no child of God is left behind. So, you know, uh, the Course says, trials are but errors offered once again. So where you made a faulty choice before, you can make a better choice and escape all the pain that your faulty choice offered you. So what happens is if we don't forgive, then we end up having that same problem over and over again. We're like, why am I having that same problem? It's just another forgiveness opportunity. And what we realize is it's a self-forgiveness opportunity that we've projected out into the situation. Ah, okay. We're learning wow. how to forgive ourselves. I call I them see. self-forgiveness so, opportunity delivery people. So would it, would I be on the right track if, like, uh, if uh, something occurred and I am blaming some outside force? It's really me that I should be forgiving, not not necessarily the outside force. Yes, blame is a way to keep the problem and guarantee it's going to come back. Oh wow. That's, it might not come that's in, amazing. in the exact same form, but it's because you deserve, it's God's will for you to be happy, consistently happy. It's God's will for you to be completely over-brimming with joy, peace, and love, because that's how you were created 
because you are an expression of God, and that's the truth about God. So salvation, God's plan for salvation is that you forgive everything that's not true that you've ever thought about yourself and accept who you really are, accept your Christ nature, and your Christ self isn't blaming, and your Christ self has no suffering or pain. So everything in your mind that isn't true will come up in your life so you can go, I'm giving this to the Holy Spirit to be undone. And this is what the Course teaches us about forgiveness. It's actually the Holy Spirit that is the forgiver. Our part is to be willing. When, when these untrue thoughts come up and we go, wait, wait a second, this is not a happy thought, we don't push it down and pretend we're not having it. We don't do negative denial. We recognize this is thought is not coming from the Christ thought system. Therefore, God did not create it. Therefore, this is, a, this is an atonement moment. It's a salvation moment. It's, it's, it's coming so that my mind can be purified of this, this thought that I've been believing in, but it obviously can't be true because God didn't create it. And God created me. So right. it's time to okay. give it to the Holy Spirit. And see, the Holy Spirit doesn't believe in our untrue thoughts, but recognizes that we do. And it's the Holy Spirit's job to take those thoughts off of our mind, along with all of their consequences, and we'll do so with our willingness. Our willingness is the key. Wow. Oh, so say a little bit more about willingness is the key to what? Salvation? To our salvation, which is how... Uh, our minds are purified. You know, that's, that's the, and he says, only God's plan for salvation will work. We can try as many other, we can try as many ego plans for salvation as we want to, but all the ego is trying to do is defend against God. It's just trying to defend its, its unreal self. Because the truth about everyone, remember Jesus said to see Christ in everyone? Yeah, because that's who everybody is. That's what God created. And gotcha. so there is a wonderful prayer in The Course in Miracles that uh, when we recognize, wait, I- I'm not feeling happy or peaceful, uh, we can say, I must have decided wrongly. You notice it's not saying, well, somebody did to m- something to me. No. He says, I, we say this prayer, I must have decided wrongly because I am not at peace. Ah. I made the decision okay. myself. You see, I made the decision myself, but I can also decide otherwise. See, we're fully empowered here. I will to decide otherwise because I want to be at peace. Yes, I want to be at peace. I do not feel guilty because the Holy Spirit will undo all the consequences of my wrong decision if I will let him. I will to let him by allowing him to decide for God for me. All right, amen. so Pamela, amen. Yeah, uh, Pamela. So let me back back you up a little bit. So something happens that you're you are angry about, and forgiveness is would be the next step. So take me through the steps and get me to salvation. How does that happen? Salvation is I'm recognizing that I have made something in the world more important than the the happiness, the peace, the love of God. So I've made something an idol, obviously. Okay. So I've decided wrongly, because I'm not at peace. Okay, so so what do you do 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 then? I go to the prayer. I say the prayer. You know, this Course teaches us to turn to the Holy Spirit for everything. Because either the Holy Spirit in, either the Holy Spirit is interpreting the situation or the ego is. Right. Which, okay. <laughs> and the ego is okay. say, yes, somebody did something, and your happiness was dependent on the thing in the world being what you wanted it to be. And this course says, you know, the Holy Spirit you knows more than you do at this time. You can't possibly judge what you need to be happy. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. You don't know everything happening everywhere in the world. You don't know everything that's happened in the past. Let the Holy Spirit be your interpreter. Turn to the Holy Spirit, unless you don't want peace. I mean, it's completely up to you. 
Amen. Okay. Wow. Wonderful. So what, um, what, uh, oh, you know what? We're going to come out to a, a, an ad. This is your, <laughs> I can't even say it anymore. This is your host, Penelope Neeson on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, bringing you little miracles. We'll be right back to talk about forgiveness. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Welcome back. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Uh, We're going to talk for just a little while about a personal practice in forgiveness that you can have. It's called the Ho'oponopono. It's from the South Sea Islands and uh, in Hawaii in particular. Uh, The Ho'oponopono is an ancient practice of forgiveness and reconciliation. And it was used thousands of years ago. And you know what? It was used because... It was used for healing because the elders of the tribe, the elders of the tribes realized that forgiveness, lack of forgiveness, was causing ill health. So let's quickly go through that. Ho'oponopono. First, in order to do this, first bring someone to your mind whom you have, whom you would like to forgive. Second, On a scale of 0 to 10, rate the level of stress that this person causes you. Remember this this number because that will be important. Third, while keeping this person in mind, say the following four phrases. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I love you. Thank you. And now take two deep breaths and then check out that scale. That scale of zero to ten about the level of stress that that person causes you now. What we're looking for is a change. And If it didn't change that much the first time, try it again. It's really not going to hurt you to try it again. And it will work. I use it all the time. Uh, So I wish you well with that. If you have any questions about that, please contact me. Uh, uh, My address is penny at pennyhealing.com. So now I would like to uh, go to 
uh, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. Raymond, would you give us your contact information so that people can uh, send you questions? Oh, most definitely. So website address, www.raymont, and that's with a T, R-A-Y-M-O-N-T, Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N.com. And my email address is raymontanderson at raymontanderson.com. That's probably the easiest way. And they can find me on Facebook as well. Wonderful. And do you have any parting thoughts? So I guess I would like to leave people with, even though there may be something going on in your life where you do not feel that you are whole, perfect, and complete, knowing that you are created in the image and likeness of the exact same power, the exact same source, the exact same God that moves stars through the heavens, that causes grass to grow, that is actually breathing you, that is making your heart beat. If you are made of and from it, then all that it is in magnificence and love and beauty and peace and everything, you are it. Thank you so much. And Reverend Pamela Whitman, would you give your contact information and some parting thoughts? Sure. Uh, my website is PamelaWhitman.com, and you will see on the Course in Miracles page that we have daily conference calls in the morning, and there's all the call and information there. We'd love to have you. And just remember, you're the light of the world. You are the love of God. You're the peace of God. You're the joy of God. If you're willing to see it in everyone you meet, that's all that is needed is your willing. The whole willingness, the Holy Spirit will take you the rest of the way. You deserve to know who you are. You are so loved. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend Pamela Whitman, and thank you, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. Have a great week. This is your host. This is your host, Penelope Neeson bringing you little miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Have a great week. This has been Little Miracles with your host, Penelope. Tune in each and every week to hear Penelope as she helps you design a life in harmony with your soul's purpose in order to live life to the fullest, only on Penelope's Little Miracles. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.